I finally got the chance to read Clash of the Elite Second Year Volume 9.5. It took a while to get this translation because comparing it to the last volume that we got, I had to wait a pretty good while in order to get an actual translation of this entire volume. But now that we got it and after I read it, I can safely say that this volume was very decent. This was mostly a setup volume because most of the things that happened were pretty much setting up things that were going to happen in the near future and that's what we'll be talking about in today's video. Now like always, I am going to have to put a spoiler warning because if you're not up to date with this series or you haven't finished reading this volume then you have been warned because this is going to contain spoilers that happened in this volume so with that out of the way let's just begin so the way this volume starts is with none other than ayana koji recounting all the recent things that have happened but also at the same time realizing that it's almost time for him it's almost time to say goodbye to this lifestyle because he's about to enter third year very soon and for him this means that once third year is over and once he's done with the the high school life he is going to be sent back to the white room however ayana koji doesn't really seem to be disappointed as he says how he really is glad to have been at this school he has experienced a lot of things that he could never have experienced in the white room friends lovers upperclassmen underclassmen and many different encounters with many different types of people. That is something that Ayana Cody doesn't regret. He doesn't regret experiencing all of these moments. And this just goes to show us once again why I enjoy Classroom of the Elite. Because it's these kind of moments that makes you wonder that in a way, Ayana Cody seems to be very grateful that he has dealt with these kind of experiences. Sure, not everything was exactly like he thought it would be, but it's very clear that he at least learned many different things about human society, which is something that he will probably have never have dealt with if he was ever in the white room. Had Ayana Cody Koji been in the white room from almost his entire life, he most likely would have still not known how humans operate and how human society functions. After this, Ayana Koji starts getting ready for the day. Of course, he's still recounting the things that have happened quite recently, which is mostly the things involving him and Kay, in which he makes it very clear that he still hasn't had any decent conversation with Kay as of right now. Of course, he's not really too worried and he's not in need of rush right now because, well, everything that has happened between Kay and him is all because of him. He had many moments to patch things up with Kay, but he decided not to. Why? Well, I mean, we're talking about Ayana Koji here. I'm pretty sure by now you understand why he did the things he did. However, things change when Ayana Koji looks at the calendar on his decks and realizes that there is a pink heart drawn on the dates that are very near to the 24th and 25th. After realizing this, he quickly tries to get into contact with K. After a few tries, he eventually does eventually get into contact with K, in which he discovers that K, just like some of the other students, have gotten sick. Of course, because of this outcome, Ayana Koji realizes that he can't fully have a conversation with K, so he tells K that it's better if she focuses on her health first and then they could talk about things later. Of course, K agrees and eventually that's where the conversation ends. After this, Ayana Koji realizes that he pretty much has the entire day all to himself and he doesn't really know what to do exactly. However, just as he's about to think what he should do, he gets messages from Ichinose in which it seems that she has a huge network and it's very clear that she has connections as she's able to find out very quickly that K has gotten sick and that she's pretty much not going to be able to be with Ayana Koji. Ichinose asks Ayana Ayana Koji what he's going to do, to which Ayana Koji responds saying that he's planning on going to the gym now that he has that gym membership, to which Ichinosha responds saying that that's a huge coincidence because she is also planning on going to the gym as well. Whether it's a coincidence or not, it's up to you to decide, but anyways. So Ayana Koji decides to go to the gym and he is surprised that there are a few people in the gym. Considering this is a Christmas season, he was expecting the gym to be a little empty, but that was not the case. However, Ayana Koji does encounter Class A's homeroom teacher. Mashima Sensei, in which Mashima is actually surprised but also at the same time really happy that Ayana Koji is in the gym. Ayana Koji at first doesn't really know why he's really happy to see him, but he doesn't really think too much about it. Mashima tries to teach Ayana Koji how to use the equipment in the gym, to which in Ayana Koji's head states how he doesn't really need to know all this because he already knows what this equipment is and how it's used because, well, he was in the white room and they had to use his equipment as well. But of course, because he realized that Mashima was just trying to be nice, he just pretends that he has no idea what the equipment is and how it works. Eventually, Ichinose does show up and both her and Ayana Koji decide to work out together. In which, at some point, Ichinose states how she's very happy to have someone to work out with her. To which Ayana Koji agrees. After two hours, Ayana Koji eventually decides to leave the gym. But before he leaves, it seems that Mashima has something to say to him. Mashima asks Ayana Koji if they could talk in private. To which Ayana Koji decides to agree. After they are in a private place, Mashima tells Ayana Koji 
Koji if he could do him a favor, to which Ayana Koji asks what kind of favor, and this is where Mashima reveals that he wants Ayana Koji to investigate someone. Of course, Ayana Koji is shocked and a little bit surprised that Mashima is asking this kind of request, but Mashima states how the only reason why he's asking him is because he knows that he is capable of investigating someone, to which Ayana Koji realizes where he's coming from, but still, he is kind of surprised about this kind of request. When Ayana Koji asks who is the person he is supposed to investigate, Mashima says a name, and her name is Akiyama. Akiyama seems to be an employee of the gym, and now Ayana Koji understands why Mashima has been going to the gym quite recently. But Ayana Koji asks Mashima why doesn't he try going after Chabashira or Hoshinomiya, since those two are very attractive and very good looking people as well, which of course, let's be honest, that is an actual fact. But Mashima says with full confidence that he will never go out with any of those two because he's been hanging out with them for a really long time and he knows that relationship with them wouldn't be great. Of course, after hearing this, Ayana Koji decides to accept and says that he will investigate Akiyama but tells Mashima not to expect much, in which Mashima agrees. After that, Ayana Koji decides that he wants to spend more time outside and not go to his room just yet. So he looks at the map to see what other locations he could go in the mall and notices that there's a store that you could rent CDs and stuff like that. Now, of course, Ayana Koji doesn't really know why such a store exists exist since in today's modern age everyone can simply find the things that they want on their phones or in the internet but he is interested into what this store is all about so he decides to check it out and he didn't really think there was going to be anybody in there but he was wrong because he does eventually find somebody that he is familiar with and that is Shiranami. If you don't know who this girl is she is somebody that's part of Ichinose's class. You might have seen her from the anime in which she was the girl that wanted to confess her feelings to Ichinose not only that but but if you have been reading second year, you will know this is the girl also that Ayana Koji helped when she was lost during the island exam of second year. She is startled to see Ayana Koji and she becomes even more embarrassed when Ayana Koji can hear the song in which the song seems to be focusing on heartbreak. But as time passes, she actually requests to talk to Ayana Koji in private to which Ayana Koji decides to hear her out. They eventually find a secluded area where there's no people whatsoever, an area that's mostly just simply vending machines and just benches. Ayana Koji at first tries to be generous and offer her a drink but she doesn't want. When he offers her a seat, she doesn't want that either. At that point, Ayana Koji realizes that she is being extremely cold to him. Shiranami gets straight to the point and asks Ayana Koji what is his relationship with Ichinose. At that point, Ayana Koji knows what this conversation is going to be about and decides to listen. She asks Ayana Koji if him and Ichinose are just simply acquaintances or are they friends or are they more than just friends, to which Ayana Koji states that he's not really sure. After hearing that, she questions if Ayana Koji is just simply trying to dodge the question, to which Ayana Koji states that that is not happening because he's actually being honest. For him, he doesn't really know what is considered friends or acquaintances as he states that just by simply talking to someone doesn't automatically mean you're friends. Of course, many people have different criterias for when a person is considered a friend or not. Of course, after hearing this, Shironami at first tries to understand where Ayana Koji is coming from from but he could quickly tell she was not satisfied with his answer which leads him to ask her if the only reason why they're even talking is because she is concerned for Ichinose to which she quickly agrees and states that she does want to see Ichinose happy and doesn't want anybody to hurt her. Ayana Koji can understand where she's coming from because even though she was rejected by Ichinose it's very clear that she still cares about her and this is for proven when she states how she tries to avoid the rumors that have been circulating between him and Ichinose to which Ayana Koji responds saying that they're just simply rumors but but some of these rumors are very brutal. Like she states how there was this rumor that apparently Ayana Koji and Ichinose, the only reason why they got the gym membership was so that they could be all alone together. How the amount of time they've been spending so much has affected their studying. And there was this rumor that apparently someone saw Ichinose go into Ayana Koji's room, which made people spread the rumor that even though Ayana Koji was in a relationship with K, he was still inviting women over to his room. After hearing all this, Ayana Koji was legit surprised that these were the rumors that were being made about him and Ichinose, but once again, he states that they are just simply rumors. After a few back and forth, Shiranami concludes that Ayana Koji, according to her, isn't really a terrible person and decides to apologize for being so cold to him. He doesn't really mind, but at some point, it seems that she really apologizes a lot because Ayana Koji states how afterwards, 
Their entire conversation was just simply 80% apologies and 20% explanations. The following day, Ayana Koji is sipping on his coffee in which he starts to see the group chat in which it has all the classmates of his class. The biggest topic that is being talked about a lot is the sales that's going to happen in Kayaki Mall. Of course, Ayana Koji seems to be interested now because there are a few items that he wants to himself that are in a discount. Specifically, there is an item that is a yogurt maker that is on sale and he wants to try it out. Now, of course, he he wonders if it's even a good idea to make this purchase but he states how he does have limited time left before he's eventually sent back to the white room and he wants to try out a yogurt maker but he finds out that it's unlimited supply meaning that there's not going to be a whole lot so Ayana Koji decides to go out and wait for the Kayaki mall to open so that he can go and get his yogurt maker however one thing that he noticed very quickly when he tries to make the line is that there is not a lot of people in the line of course he is confused by this since based on the group chat a lot of of people were going to go for the sales and many other discounts that were going to happen in the mall so he tries to ask other people to see what's going on he first tried asking a first year but this first year is completely useless as not only does he go on a huge rant about video game consoles but then proceeds to also have a big conversation about ebooks and manga something in which Ayana Koi has no interest in whatsoever but eventually he finds out that all this time he was in the wrong line. There was actually another line that was for the discounts and sales but it was too late because as soon as Ayana Koi tries to get his yogurt maker it all sold out. For the first time Ayana Koi feels defeated and in order to deal with this defeat he decides to go to the supermarket and just simply stare at the milk and yogurt wondering how he would have easily been able to make yogurt at his house had he had the yogurt maker and it seems that because he was staring too much on the aisle someone actually was curious as to see what he was doing and that is none other than Kuryuin from class 3b. Kuryuin asks Ayana Koji why he just simply staring at the milk and yogurt to which Ayana Koji after explaining everything from the yogurt maker to the line to the sales Kuryuin laughs at all of it and decides to say that she can't believe that Ayana Koryu is devastated because of all that but she is surprised at the same time as well because that just shows for her that Ayana Koji is still just some ordinary high schooler something in which Ayana Koji even as well is impressed by it. but Kuryuin tells Ayana Koji why doesn't he just simply buy the yogurt maker online since it's probably more cheaper as well if he goes online Ayana Koji decides to use his phone and see if there are yogurt makers online to which he is surprised that there are actually yogurt makers and there's even some that are way cheaper than the ones that were going to be on discount. He thanks Korean for that helpful advice in which after the whole fiasco with the yogurt maker this is where things start to become serious as Korean tells Ayana Koji that he should be ready for the next term and the upcoming battles because it's not going to be easy. When Ayana Koji asks what does she mean by that she states how she got information that there's clearly going to be moves being made in the next term. More specifically it seems that there's going to be an event that's going to happen. Ayana Koji states how there has been many moments in his years in the school that there have been very unexpected tests like for example the in-class voting exam and the unanimous voting as well. Those were unexpected tests that really just showed that the school was trying to do whatever it takes in order to cut down the amount of students that they had in the school. So it wouldn't be surprising if there's an upcoming surprise test along the way. Of course it's all just speculation and he's just theorizing but he does seem very confident it is about to happen. Happen. After this information has been revealed, the rest is just simply knowing more about Kuryuin as a character. We find out that just like Ayana Koji, Kuryuin wants to do her own life. She doesn't want anybody to control it and she wants to do the things that she wants to do. We also find out that she comes from a family that built a name for themselves, but she states how she wants no connection to that family and she doesn't want any help from her family whatsoever, showing once again that she wants to become a very independent person. Ayana Koji can see that Kuryuin was being honest and very serious about all this. Not only that, but Kuryuin also revealed reveals how she wishes as well that she could have been able to see Ayana Koji in the next year but of course since she's a third year she'll be graduating very soon and since the school doesn't allow repeats there's no way she's going to be able to see where Ayana Koji is going to be by third year but also states that hopefully in the near future once both him and her are out of the school they can eventually see each other in the near future to which Ayana Koji is of course not really sure if that's even going to happen because once again he believes that this is going to be his last few moments before he enters back to the white room but of course he keeps that all to himself. 
after his conversation with Kiryuin, Ayanako is still walking around Kiyaki Mall in which he decides to stop by the Christmas tree in which he could tell that it's become very popular because a lot of people are in the Christmas tree taking pictures. And amongst the crowds, he could see that Ichinose is taking pictures with other people as well. Of course, he doesn't want to interrupt so he decides to wait until she's finished but while waiting, he encounters Hoshinomiya and Chabashira. After a small talk between him and the teachers, Ichinose decides to walk up to him and talk to him and of course Ichinose says how she's been taking non-stop pictures with many different people in the tree. Ayana Koji can quickly tell why she did all that because as soon as she saw him she asked if he could take a picture with her and the reason why she took pictures to begin with with other people was that it doesn't look suspicious that she only has a photo with her and Ayana Koji. Ayana Koji realized how smart that actually was and Ichinose reveals as well that her taking a picture with Ayana Koji is her ultimate wish and of course Ayana Koji doesn't refuse and eventually both Ichinose and Ayana Koji take a picture of the Christmas tree. And just as things are about to be over, someone else comes as well, none other than Nanase, in which she asks if she could take a picture with Ichinose. Ichinose doesn't mind. Very quickly, Nanase reveals that there's another person that wants to take a picture with Ichinose, and it's none other than Hosen. Remember Hosen? Of course, Ichinose and Ayana Koji are surprised, more specifically Ayana Koji, because he can't imagine Hosen being the kind of person that likes to get his pictures taken. However, because Ayana Koji was staring too much at Hosen, Hosen decides to walk up to Ayana Koji and ask what's wrong. Obviously, it's very clear that Hosen does not like Ayana Koji staring at him for too much, and Ayana Koji decides to just say that it's simply nothing. Of course, in his head, he's wondering if he has to prepare himself just in case Hosen decides to throw a surprise attack at him. Eventually, Hosen takes a picture with Ichinose, and when he seems to be far away, Ayana Koji asks Nanase what was that all about, to which Nanase reveals that Hosen actually has a crush on Ichinose. Nose, which to be honest I was not expecting that I was not expecting out of all the characters Hosen to be interested in another person but it seems that he does have some feelings for Ichinose now of course we don't know whether that's exactly the case because well they couldn't tell Hosen because he went away but I wonder if this is going to go anywhere in the future volume only time will tell Ayana Koji realizing there's nothing left to do decides to say goodbye to Ichinose and leave straight away after this, during December 26, there seems to be a secret meeting involving Ayana Koji's classmates. However, this meeting only contained about 8 people, these being Ike, Sudo, Shinohara, Masushita, Mori, Wang, Mazono, and Onodera. And the person to be confused as to why these certain people were chosen for this meeting is none other than Masushita. Obviously, she is confused why people like Hirata, Horikita are not included since if this is about the class, then obviously those two people need to be included in this meeting. But it seems the person who organized this meeting, this being Mazono, had no intention of inviting those people. Of course, she's still wondering what's going on but eventually decides to head to the meeting after she heads to the meeting which is in a cafe she sees that everyone but two people these being Ike and Shinohara are there eventually Ike and Shinohara do meet and of course they're late but the meeting starts and this meeting is all about the future of the class more specifically it seems like this meeting is all about one particular person in the class and that is none other than Kiyotaka Ayana Koji now this is a very long discussion so I'm gonna try to make it simple and basically just cover some of the few important details basically my zono is worried that ayana koji is going to become a threat to the class why is because it seems quite recently that he's not really showing how much he is capable of ayana koji for a good while has been holding back and not showing his true potential and it's not just her it's also other members who are in this meeting as well they wonder if ayana koji has been holding back this entire time and for what reason this explains very well why people like horikita Harata and other members who seem to have some sort of connection to Ayana Koji weren't invited is because Maizono believed that these people were going to eventually try to cover for Ayana Koji and protect him no matter what. Of course, that didn't mean that there wasn't going to be people protecting Ayana Koji in this meeting. People like Sudo, which shout out to Sudo for being a bro, was defending Ayana Koji saying that he probably has his reasons why he wants his showing off. And Masushita as well was also in some ways trying to defend Ayana Koji as well, stating how if that were the case, Ayana Koji will be a huge asset to the class so they shouldn't really try to do anything that will make him very angry at them. And even when further saying that if there was a scenario in which Ayana Koji was the leader of their class, she would fully support 
support it. She wouldn't mind Ayana Koji being the leader instead of Horikita. Of course, Maizona quickly disagrees with that, but they both realize that it's all just simply speculation and it hasn't really happened yet. Eventually, towards the end, they all agree that they should ask Ayana Koji in the next term to show off his skills that could be beneficial for their class. And thus, that is the end of the meeting. However, it's very clear from this meeting that there's a reason why many students don't talk in public places. And this is clearly proven once we find out that Hashimoto was actually listening to this meeting the entire time. We see Kamura walking when she is stopped by Hashimoto. Of course, she is not happy to see him, but Hashimoto gets straight to the point saying that he has juicy intel in which he tells Kamura about the meeting he just heard between the classmates of Ayana Koji. Of course, Kamura seems to not be interested at first, but that all quickly changes when Hashimoto states how the classmates of Ayana Koji were talking about how he seems to be the one doing everything behind the scenes. Of course, this piques Kamuro's interest, and this of course leads to Hashimura revealing that he has intentions of investigating Ayana Koji even more now now that he has this information, and he wants Kamuro to help him out. At first, Kamuro's not really too keen on the idea because she states how if they were to do things behind Sakenagi's back and without her approval, they could both get into serious trouble. But she also says at the same time that they're going to have to investigate if this is true, if Ayana Koji really is a threat, because they need to make sure to come up with a counter attack. If if Ayana Koji plans on taking down class A and thus begins the investigation of Kiyotaka Ayana Koji. The next scene involves Ayana Koji already trying to figure out what to do for a day since he doesn't really have plans since Kei is recovering from being sick. Of course, Ayana Koji first starts by cleaning his entire house and to making sure it's spotless. But then, in his mind, he starts thinking about cakes and wonders if he could get a cake at discount price. So when he finishes cleaning his house, he decides to head over to once again the Kiyaki Mall and see if there's any cakes that are available. However, once he reaches the supermarket and pretty much the cake aisle, he realizes that there's no more cake that are on discount which of course once again he feels a little sad because he really wanted cake upon leaving the supermarket he is then called out by none other than Sakenagi. she asks ayana koji what he is doing to which he says that he is just simply wanting to buy a cake but since there weren't any he didn't buy anything at all but at the same time he was also curious as to why Sakenagi was here at the first place but that is quickly answered when a male student who seems to be in Sakenagi's class walks in this is where Sakinaga introduces to the person whose name is Sanada. Of course, Ayana Koji has never met him before and this is the first time he's ever spoken to him. He is kind of confused at first why Sakinaga is with another male student which leads to Sakenagi teasing him that she is in a type of date. But that is not the case whatsoever because it is later revealed that Sakenagi was just helping Sanada out in picking a gift for his girlfriend. Later that evening, when Ayana Koji is back at his dormitory, he gets a call from Sakenagi, to which he is surprised by, but of course he answers very quickly. However, it seems that Sakenagi was already at his front door because he could already hear knocks. And of course, as it turns out, Sakenagi seems to have an item with her. And it's revealed that that is cake. Of course, Ayana Koji is shocked by that fact that she has cake and it seems that it's really good cake that seems to be made from a person who knows a lot about cakes and is very good at it. Of course, Sakenai reveals that she didn't just outright buy these cakes. In fact, she had a story to tell in which apparently someone ordered these cakes but that person didn't need them anymore and this person had no idea what to do with them which led to this person giving them to Sakinagi. After both Ayana Koji and Sakinai eat their cakes, Sakinai tells Ayana Koji that she wants to go for a walk outside. Of course, Ayana Koji doesn't refuse and decides to walk along with her. Sakinai asks Ayana Koji what does he think of her class. Of course, Ayana Koji tells her why she wants to know all of a sudden, but Sakinai just states that she just simply wants to hear what he has to say. Ayana Koji states how the class is doing very good quite recently. But there are still some things that are left to be improved. Of course, Sakinai seems to be pleased by the answer, almost like she already knew what was going to be said about her class from Ayana Koji. This is where Ayana Koji asks Sakinai his own question, asking her why she seems to be monitoring him a lot quite recently. Of course, she responds by saying that she has no idea what he's talking about because she hasn't specifically asked someone to monitor him. This is where Ayana Koji draws the conclusion that the people who are monitoring him are doing it out of their own free will. Eventually, Sakinai decides that the walk is over and tells Ayana Koi that he could go back to his place. 
And as Ayana Koji is walking back to his place, she calls out to him one more time. This is the moment in which Sakinagi decides to confess her feelings to Ayana Koji, telling him that she's starting to like him not as a human being, but as someone from the opposite sex. Ayana Koji asks Sakinagi if she needs a response right now, to which Sakinagi states that she doesn't and he could just simply go home. Of course, this leads to Ayana Koji telling her one more thing, in which she states that if she could turn that emotion from weakness to strength, to which Sakinagi responds by saying that's a stupid question to ask. After Ayana Koji leaves, Sakinagi spends more time to herself and she is surprised at the fact that she can't believe that she would fall for someone because she never expected to fall for anybody. But at the same time, she still wants to defeat Ayana Koji. She still wants to be the one to take him down and she states very clearly that she's going to make sure that he doesn't get his own way that she's going to make sure that she gets to see his face when he sees something unpredictable and something that completely caught him off guard that is something that she wants to see from ayana koji so it's very clearly showing us that once again sakinagi is a very complex character and she has a very complex relationship with ayana koji i'm curious to see what's going to happen with this because now things are starting to become really interesting and it's official i mean it's very clear now that ayana koji has his own harem so these are words i never expected to say in classroom dearly but i mean it's now actually official like ayana koji now has a harem and i'm curious to see what's going to happen with everyone involved so yeah, let's see what happens in the future. The following day, Ayana Koji receives a phone call from Yuen in which she wants to see him right away and he wasn't going to take no for an answer because Ayana Koji tried that and of course Ryuen was not having it. And of course, this begins the meeting between Ryuen, Ayana Koji, and Katsuragi. Now, this is really, a, once again, a very long discussion, but basically, Ryuen tells both Katsuragi and Ayana Koji that he got info from a third year in which there seems to be something going to happen in the following term and it's very clear that there's going to be something that's going to impact the classes in the near future and of course Ayana Koji decides to join in the conversation saying that that's exactly what he heard as well and both Ryuwen and Ayana Koji realize that this is not a coincidence clearly it seems that this information was intended to be found out eventually but the question is why was that the case why were they doing all this of course Ryuwen is very quick to want to come up with a plan to do something about this but Katsuragi doesn't want to do anything unless they get more specific details and that's pretty much how the conversation ends and ultimately both Ayana Koji, Ryuen, and Katsuragi decide to walk together and look around the mall. At the same time this is all happening, Kate is feeling better and is not sick anymore and decides to hang out with Sato. Obviously she is still bummed out on all the things that happened with Ayana Koji but Sato being the good friend decides to help her out in whatever way she can. She wants Kate to cheer up and make her believe that everything is going to be okay since both Ayana Koji and Kate have agreed that they are going to discuss this very soon. After which it seems that the conversation between Ryu and Katsuragi and Ayana Koji is over and as Ayana Koji is a about to leave he notices very quickly that there's somebody watching of course he still tries to act that like he can't tell somebody's watching him but very quickly he's able to call out the person who is watching them and of course this person who was watching him the entire time was none other than Yamamura one of the members of class A. Yamamura is surprised at the fact that Ayana Koji was able to spot her but it wasn't just only him it seems that Ryuin as well noticed that there was somebody watching them because he enters the picture as well and thanks Ayana Koji for finding out the person who was spying on them the entire time. It is later revealed that Yamamura was actually spying on them because of orders of Sakinagi. Of course, Ryuin intimidates Yamamura and tells her that she and Sakinagi, if they are curious about him, they could always meet at his room. Now, of course, this is obviously a joke, but Katsuragi actually takes offense of this because for him, he sees that Ryuin is simply just treating the girls as nothing but objects. But of course, Ryuin is very quick to say that he was just simply joking and that he has no interest interest in any of them whatsoever. Of course, Ayana Koji can understand why Katsuragi was mad because if you don't know, Katsuragi does have a sister that he hasn't had any contact with for a while. So it's understandable why he reacted like that. But of course, once again, this is Ryun we're talking about. So it shouldn't really be surprising that he will make comments like this. After that whole event, Ayana Koji decides to try to look for Yamamura because as soon as Ryun was done with her, of course, she instantly left the place. But he is very quick to find her. And in fact, Yamamura is actually shocked at the fact that Ayana 
Ayana Cody found her once again. She starts looking at her pockets, wondering if Ayana Cody threw in some GPS, to which Ayana Cody denies. And then she wonders if Ayana Cody was using phone tracker, using her phone to track her where she's at, which of course Ayana Cody once again denies. After which Ayana Cody just simply tells her that he is sorry for what happened because if he had an exposure, then Ryuin most likely wouldn't have done the things he was doing. But Yamamura states that there's nothing to worry about because she knew the risks she was taking when spying on someone's conversation. And just when it seems that the conversation is about to end, Ayana Kuri can hear both Sato and Kei coming very close by, to which he hides in a nearby vending machine. Of course, Yamamura is shocked by the sudden action, but Ayana Kuri tells her to just simply be quiet for a while. It seems that Kei and Sato are very close by because both Yamamura and Ayana Koji can hear the conversations they're having and one of these conversations was of course of Sato confronting Kei when she found out that Kei had feelings for Ayana Koji since remember Sato also had feelings as well. After hearing this Yamamura just simply looks at Ayana Koji to which of course he seems very apologetic for her having to hear all that but it seems that Yamamura seems to be more interested in the conversation and listens to it more closely which of course leads to her finding out about the fight that both Kei and Ayana Koji had. After Kei and Sato leave Yamamura tells Ayana Koji that he needs to make up with her to which Ayana Koji is surprised by the sudden request from Yamamura but tells her that he is going to do just that and then of course the day finally comes and with both Ayana Koji and Kei finally have their moment in which they finally discuss after a long while. Ayana Koji after meeting with her at the location they promised to meet could tell that she was very anxious and after they decided to walk together he could still tell that Kei was very anxious about what was about to be said in their conversation. Ultimately, Ayana Koji tells Kei that everything is fine and she has nothing to worry about because they are still going to have the relationship. And of course, he gives her a gift, a gift that was meant for Christmas and as it turns out, it's a necklace that she always wanted. At that point, Kei starts to really tear up and be very happy at the fact that she is still with Ayana Koji and hugs him and embraces him very tightly. But in Ayana Koji's head, he states how he needs to keep Kei a little longer because she still is very parasitic. And that Kei right now is still fully dependent on him and he has to still be around her no matter what. And I know for some people for this moment they're gonna be like oh Ayana Koji never cared about Kei or stuff like that. No he states very clearly that he's still very grateful for Kei and all the experiences that he was taught by her. But at the same time, I also feel like he's still in this black and white scenario and which still has no idea what love really is. I mean, he states it very clearly that he still has no idea what love is all about and what it's supposed to be because he doesn't really have a specific reaction when it comes to love. And of course, he used K to experience that, but of course, he hasn't really learned about it fully. And I feel like at these moments, it's very clear that he's really just missing the point. When it comes to these kind of things, he always just narrows it down to like whatever he thinks, or whatever he feels. He doesn't really think about the other person. Like he could say that K is parasitic. Okay, whatever, right? That's like typical of Ayana Koi to say. But I feel like he has no idea or doesn't want to realize that every relationship is very different. I don't know what is it about that. I feel like he still thinks that a specific relationship has to be a specific thing. When that's not the case, I feel like every the relationship, depending on the person, is always different. So I don't know if he's ever going to learn about that. I really don't know. I mean, I'm curious to see if he will eventually find out what it means to actually love someone because right now it's just all over the place. Like, I feel like at this point, he's just misunderstanding the whole aspects about love. But hopefully in the near future, hopefully he is able to learn about all this and he eventually comes to realize how grateful he is to have K around. Only time will tell and I'm really curious what the relationship is even going to be because he says he's going to stay with her for a while but who knows he may end up being with another person. I mean he has a full list of girls at this point so he has a lot of options but only time will tell what will happen in the relationship with Ayana Koji and K. These next two moments, I'm just going to lump them together because there's not really a lot of details that are really that important. There is a few actually, but not a lot. So I end up coach the very next day. He decides to head to the school, not that the school is open, to see the library. And surprise, surprise, the person who is there is Hiyori. Now, of course, Hiyori and Ayana Koji are obviously people who enjoy books a lot. And is the reason why they even are able to talk to each other is because they have similar hobbies. And at this moment, it's very interesting because Hiyori actually does have a book that doesn't even belong to the library. In fact, it seems this is a book that she's been keeping on for a while now and decides to give it to Ayana Koji. Now, of course, Ayana Koji is surprised because the book is way different from the ones that he sees in the library. And also the author, he's never really heard of this 
this person before and of course he finds out very quickly that it seems that Hiyori must have actually really wanted him to read this book. After Ayana Koji left the library, there was a moment in which he actually hangs out with Sudo and Hirata. There's nothing really interesting in this conversation other than the fact that Sudo does mention that some girl kept asking about his OAA and pretty much all his skills and he kind of felt weirded out. When asked who this girl is, he pretty much has forgotten all about it. Of course, Ayana Koji isn't too concerned. That is, however, as soon as he leaves, he notices that there is a girl that wants to talk to him. Now, this is a new character in which her name is Ai. Ai is a member of class A. And it seems that she wants to talk to him. Of course, Ayana Koji accepts and decides to hear her out, but he very quickly realizes this is a very weird conversation because she states very clearly that she is not only just investigating him, but also other members of his class as well. Of course, Ayana Koji is very surprised to hear that she's not only investigating him, but also other people in his class. And Ayana Koji was very quick to put the pieces together in which he realized that this was probably the same girl that was talking to Sudo. Of course, after the conversation, Ayana Koji tells her if she has found anything interesting about him, to which she responds by saying yes, by just simply having this conversation with him, she could quickly tell that he is is a threat. Of course, Ayana Cody doesn't really understand how she came up with this conclusion, but doesn't try to change her mind. After which, she decides to leave, and of course, now we are introduced to a new character, and I'm really excited to see what she has to offer, because it's very clear that she is very interested not just in Ayana Koji, but other people as well. So it'll be interesting what she's going to do with that information as the series goes on. After this, Ayana Cody decides that the only way to thank Hiyori is not other than to invite her to hang out. Now, of course, he had to talk to Kay about this before he did it because obviously he doesn't want any more problems between him and K. and of course K, while still first reluctant to accept it she does eventually let Ayana Koji hang out with Hiyori but things don't go exactly as planned because while they were in the middle of hanging out Kamuro decides to jump in and decides to have a conversation with the both of them but of course it's not a friendly conversation because it is Kamuro we're talking about she starts by first of course insulting Ayana Koji telling him that she is surprised to see Ayana Koji hang hanging out with another girl even though he's in a relationship like it's nothing and of course while she tries to investigate Ayana Koji someone else decides to show up and it's none other than Hashimoto and Kito these are pretty much people who are part of Sakinagi's group and obviously Kamuro is not happy to see Hashimoto once again Hashimoto invites both Ayana Koji and Hiyori to hang out with them at first Kamuro has no intention to hang out with anybody but she is stopped by Hashimoto and when he says something to her ear that prevents her from leaving and of course the entire group decide to hang out at a cafe well that was the only option that was available because every time a place was recommended Kamura would instantly shut it down so I guess it seems that cafes were okay for her but once they settled on the place this is where of course Hashimoto, Kamura and Kito tried to investigate Ayana Koji I'm kind of surprised they did this with Hiyori but I'm guessing they didn't think too much of Hiyori because they don't really know her but I'm more impressed at the fact that even though this conversation was about class a it was about ayana koji and you know what he's hiding it seems that either hiyori was not interested in the conversation or she was just simply pretending to not be interested and she was just paying close attention but it's very clear when even though hashimoto was telling her a bunch of questions about what she thinks about ayana koji she was very calm and she was not very hesitant with her answers so once again it shows us that hiyori is a very calm collected person and she's very honest even hashimoto and his entire group were kind of surprised at just her honesty overall but eventually of course this investigation didn't really get them anywhere because they couldn't confirm or deny if Ayana Koji was hiding something else and of course Ayana Koji wasn't going to reveal every intention that he had or every plan that he was going to make so in a way this investigation sort of got them some leads but not really after which both Ayana Koji and Hiyori left the group because most likely as Ayana Koji stated he saw that they were getting a call from Sakinagi and of course they immediately were responded to it. After which Ayana Koji apologizes to Hiyori for the sudden turn of events of their plan but Hiyori doesn't really seem to care because she really had a good time. They didn't mind hanging out with some of the members of class A and just when it seems that they're ready to both call it a day, Hiyori actually reveals that the entire time the book that she gave to Ayana Koji was actually made by her father. That's right, it seems that Hiyori's father is an author and now Ayana Koji 
we could understand why Hiyori was so into books. And the volume ends with Ayana Koya realizing that winter break is coming to an end and that the third term is just around the corner and he wants to see what is going to happen. What is going to happen for the future of not only himself but the entire class that he is in. And that's the end of volume 9.5. So overall very decent volume. I know this was like a setup volume for future events that are probably going to take place in the next few volumes but I'm really excited to see. It's very clear there's going to be a lot of things going on. I'm curious to see what's going to happen with third year. I'm really excited to see what is going to be the fate for Ayana Koji. The confession of Sakinai was really interesting because while she does have feelings for Ayana Koji, it seems that she also wants to destroy him at the same time which I'm really curious to see. Then there's the whole thing between K and Ayana Koji. I know there's still going to be discussions about that, but I'm still curious what's going to happen with these two based on everything that has happened. I'm not really sure at this point if they're even going to end up being still together by the end of the story, but we just have to wait and see because once again, Classroom DLE is a very unexpected series and it could go any direction at this point. I am kind of interested though as to why Kushida or Horikita didn't have any like moment in this volume. Hopefully in the next volume, they have their moment moments as well but until then that's pretty much my entire video i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you next time